here to stay. See, I have been talked about, and oh, I have been criticized. I've had to wipe many, many, many tears from my eyes, but I'm still. I'm holding on. I'm still. I'm holding on. I'm still. I'm holding on to God's hand. Whoa, cause I'm still oh, holding on. Let go Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Come on, somebody shout glory. Come on, let God have his way. Come on, let God have his way. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. As a pastor, amen, at Unity Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. I need to address something real, real quick. Amen. And we'll move on. Something just happened, and some may understand and some may not understand. Amen. Someone asked, amen, could they say something? Amen. And Minister Long, as an officer, he said no. And he said no, ma'am. Amen. And what he did was not wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's already been written. And we done had meetings after meetings after meetings. Amen. If anybody, anybody have anything to say, amen, we must do it before service. That way, amen, I as a pastor, amen, I know what you going to say. Amen. The Bible says whatever we do in decent and in order. And that includes me too. Amen. 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 Now, I believe what Sister Robinson wanted to address, amen, was the author Addison, amen, amen, service, a concert, amen. But we must have things in place. Amen. Deacon, um, not deacon, but brother Cedric Smith is being set aside as a deacon. Amen. So he must watch, learn, amen, and then be able to go forth. Amen. When we're in God's house, amen, you know, someone called me just the other day and told me, said, Pastor, I don't like what you said. But if he was been listening, he would have heard the whole story. Amen. Amen. So the thing about it, amen, we must pay attention. There's a lot of rules and regulations. We got bylaws and amen. We got things in place and they're in place for a reason. God's word, God has given his word for God's people. This word is for God's people. Amen. And we must obey it. Amen. So let us move forward. Amen. Somebody say thank you Lord. Let's go to Jeremiah. Praise God. Jeremiah 1 and 17. I'm still there. Amen. I'm going to do a little series on this because, amen, this is something that we must understand. Look to somebody say, get yourself ready. Amen. My heart goes out, amen, to Brother James. Amen. I was just getting to know that brother, amen, during the week, uh, every other week, amen, I try to call those that are shedding in. Amen is sick. And one thing I knew about Amen, Brother James, he loves himself some football. Oh, yeah. Amen. And he loved the, the Eagles. I called him two weeks ago, and Amen, we was talking for a while, Amen, about the Eagles. So you know, let's keep Brother Bercy family lifted. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Jeremiah 1 um, and 17. Amen. And when you're there, amen, if you desire to stand, stand. I thank God, amen, for my first love being in the house. And it's not Sister Chapman, it's Mother Chapman. <laughs> amen. But amen, I thank God for Sister Chapman too. Amen. She is the love of my life, but my mother was my first love because she nourished me and amen. She took care of me. She gave me birth. I thank God, amen, for my... Amen. Deceased father, too. Amen. I thank God for my upbringing. Amen. Jeremiah 1 and 17, and it says, I want everybody to shout this first little line with me real quick. One, two, three. Get yourself ready. One, two, three. Get yourself ready. One, two, three. Get yourself ready. Amen. You can be seated. I want that to sink in. We're spending too much time trying to get everybody else prepared, but you got to get yourself ready. Look to somebody and say, God, God is talking God. to me. I can't fix you. Uh-oh. Brother, you can't fix me until you fix yourself. Sister, you can't fix me until you fix yourself. Used to be an old song say sweep around your own front door. Come on, somebody. We have to learn how to fix ourselves. 
The words say, get yourself ready, stand up and say to them what I have commanded you to, to you. Do not be terrified of them and I will terrify you before them. I want to break this down a little bit and then I'm going to move on. Father God, Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We thank you for your people. We thank you for, amen, each and everything been done and said so far. Father God, I believe by faith it was done decent in order. Father God, we put James Bercy family before you right now, the bereaved. Father God, we ask you to hug Ruby Bercy and, and all the, the sibling and mother, uh, mother, mother, um, um, uh, what's the mother name? That's Sister Bercy's sister, right? Sister Glow? That's Mother Kennedy. I'm sorry. Mother, mother Kennedy and and all the family, Father God, we pray for his, his sons, his daughter. We, we, we just pray for everyone right now, Father God. Be with them, Father God, in a special way. Hover your spirit around them. Squeeze them tight, Father God. You said in your word you would never leave us nor forsake us. We will be with us at the end of time. Now, Father God, as we look toward heaven, we ask you to open up the windows of heaven. Pull us out, Lord, what we need right now. We need your word. We need your divine word. We need a word that will uplift us, turn us around, Father God, and set us free. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Sister Del Delisa, I had a song on my mind, amen, but I think I'm going to leave it alone, praise God. But later on, if, if the Lord leads me, I may need your help. Amen. Listen to what the word said. Get yourself ready. Stand up before them. I command you, you, do not be terrified of them. Somebody say, do not be terrified of them. Look to somebody say, I ain't scared. Say, I ain't scared. Come on, somebody, praise God. The Lord said, listen, if you be scared of them, amen, I will terrify them before them. He said, I have made you, amen, I, I have made you fortified city. That means God has made you with some strength. God has made you with some backbone. Look at somebody and say, I got some backbone. I told you 2023, amen, we don't know what to expect. January ain't even gone, amen, and we done lost a beloved brother. People, we got to get ourselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually ready for whatever. Let me say it again. Physically, emotionally, and spiritual for whatever. Because you don't know what's to come. We don't know what's, I don't know what the next hour is going to break, let alone, come on somebody. I was on funeral, funeral duties yesterday. Amen. Funeral duty yesterday. Amen. And the preacher kept saying, love one another. People, we got to learn. People, we got to love folks now. Look at somebody and say, now. I said we got to get ourselves together. We got to be ready for whatever. Amen. Because when somebody gone, ain't nothing you can say. They don't hear you. Give me my flowers now. Give me my flowers now. You got to learn how to appreciate people now. Because when I'm dead and gone, I don't need you standing up telling lies. Can I keep it real? Don't talk about you like me and you love me and you couldn't even stand me when I was living. Love me now. We got to get ready for everything. And the Bible said, praise God. He said, I, he said, they will fight against you. They will fight against you. Sometimes we think it's strange that people are coming against you. But that's what the enemy is supposed to do. The enemy is supposed to do. They're not supposed to treat you nice. They're not supposed to say things nice about you. Come on, somebody. They're supposed to do you nice, nasty, nasty, nice. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. But listen what the Lord said. He was talking to Jeremiah and he told him, said, praise God, but will not overcome you. They will not overcome you. No matter what you throw at somebody, praise God, if you are rooted 
in the love of God, you cannot be plucked. People, we got to get rooted and grounded in God's word. And every wind that come your way, you will not be tossed to and from. He said, for I am with you. I will rescue you, declared the Lord. Look to somebody and say, God got me. But I need to be ready for whatever. Sometimes we're feeling insignificant. We're feeling unsuccessful. Or that nothing we do makes a difference. That ain't nobody but the enemy. Want to belittle you. Think you ain't nothing. I may can't sing like Sister Crawford. But I'm going to sing to the glory of God. In all my mistakes, I know God can still do a miracle. Come on, somebody, and talk to me. But we must remember, praise God, that you and you and you matters. You are more to God than you will ever know. You may not be that much to Pastor Chapman, but you are more to God than you will ever, ever, ever know. What Sister Sharon Chapman is to me, she may not be to some other man, and it better not be. Come on, somebody, and talk to me. Some people say I'm fat, but I say I'm big bony. But my wife loves it, and that's all that matters. And we understand, praise God, that God is sovereign, and God, praise God, God is all the source that we need. God is saying, get yourself ready now. We got to get ourselves ready now. So many people are getting themselves ready with the 401k. I'm no different than nobody else. Amen. I do a little stocks every now and then. I got another 500 coming on the roof real soon. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, when you're doing stocks, you're taking a chance. When you put your money in 401k, you're taking a chance. But when you put your trust in God, we serve an everlasting God that gives us more than we can ever want. God money don't run out. That's why the Bible said that God loves a cheerful giver. Come on, somebody. That's why God said in his word, if you sow sparingly, you're going to get much. Uh-uh. If you sow bountifully, you get what? Bountifully. God want to give somebody the increase. But you got to get yourself ready. You got to get your mind ready. You got to get spiritually ready, amen, for the work of God. The enemy job is to come to derail you, to get you off course. But look at somebody say, it's time to fight. You got to fight. My brother and sister, the wealthy, the Bible teaches us that the wealthy, the even strong, the wealth is even strong and wealthy. But do you know they go weak and hungry at times too because we got to realize praise God the only one that will have everything they need the one that pursue God with passion we got to get passionately about God's business and when we begin to do that praise God God will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out so much that you won't even have room to receive and look to somebody say I ain't just talking about money Everything you need, amen, God got it. But unity, friends and family, the question is, are you ready for it? Are you ready for what God has for you? Because the enemy is telling the Lord, they're not ready. Amen. Remember the story about Job. Job, look at somebody say, Job had it all. I say Job had it all. 
But the devil, amen, was going to and from, seeing who he can try, seeing who he can devour. And God said, well, wait a minute, Satan. You ain't got to go far. I got a man by the name of Joe. Have you not considered, amen, my son Joe? Have you not considered unity? Have you not considered the Matthews, the Browns, the Longs, the Chapmans? Come on, the Mitchells. Amen. But are you ready to be tried? Come on, are you ready to be tested? Amen. By Satan. Are you on your game? Are you prepared for some action? Are you prepared for some war? You have to realize, amen, every report you get ain't going to be good. Every time I go to the doctor, I'm looking for a good report. I'm tired of hearing my doctor talking about you on the borderline. Either I am or I'm not. But we have to understand, praise God, if we don't get ourselves together, we're going to lose out. I want you to go to the book of Job, the first chapter, and I'm almost about done. Because I want to leave you with something that's going to grab you. I want to leave something that's going to stick to you. I want to leave something to you, Uncle Ward, that will help you along the way. Somebody said, I didn't know he was your uncle. I call all older men's uncle. Just like an uncle. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. See, sometimes we say things in church people don't understand, so sometimes you got to break it down. Go to Job. Now, the Bible says, Job 1 said that there was a man in the land of all whose name was Job. And the man was blameless and upright and who feared God. And it just didn't stop there. And then it said he shined it from evil. He got himself ready. See, you can't be ready and still doing any and everything. You either got to be in or you're out. The only thing that I know that you can ride, and let me be careful with this. Amen. I rode a horse in Alabama. Amen. One feet there and one feet there. It's the only thing that I... But when it comes to evil, you can't, you, your feet got to be either on this side or the other side. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. You have to realize, praise God, the Bible said that Job had himself ready. Job had seven sons, three daughters, a man was born to him. And then he said he had all the possession. He had thousands of sheep, 300 camels, and 500 yokes of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and large, and a very large household. Job had everything. The Bible says this man was the greatest man of all of the people in the East. Look at somebody say, Job had it going on. People, even though we think we got ourselves together. And every time you say you get yourself together, the enemy get even madder. The enemy gets so mad. Look at her. Look at him. Look at them. But God, let me try them. Let me try. Let me give them a, a, a bad report. Let the pastor not shake the hand. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. Let me not sing my song. Let me not lead worship service. Come on, somebody. People, when you are together, I'm going to keep saying it because I want it to sink in. You are spiritually ready for whatever. Your emotions can't get in the way. Somebody just told me something the other day that, 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 that really helped me. Then somebody told me this morning. You can't let what folks say. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. You can't let what folks say to upset you. People will ask me from the outside, well, how are unity treating you? Fantastic. Loving it. 
See, all they need is just a little something. Then they're running with it. Pastor Chapman ain't happy over there. Should have stayed where he at. I like what Brother Smith said when the man asked him in the restaurant, well, how your pastor doing? Doing good. I love him. See, that shut the devil mouth. They first, then the Lord said to Satan, have you, then the Lord said to Satan, have you, you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the earth. And what, what God was saying, listen, amen, he's ready. He's ready. He's ready. Why we go through the things that we go through? Because God believes that we're ready. Look to somebody say, don't disappoint your daddy. Don't disappoint your father. Sometimes we get in a pity party. Wives. Wives. Husband. Sometimes you may cook something that man don't like. That's to encourage you. That ain't for you to stop cooking. It said it twice. Blameless, upright, who fear God and shun for evil. So, so the ninth verse, and Satan, Satan answered and said to the Lord, Does Job fear God for, for anything? Have you, have you not made a herd around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? You have blessed his work of his hand and all his possession have increased in the land but now stretch out your hand and touch all that he had he will surely curse you to your face look to somebody and say the devil is a lie I done made it my mind my, 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 I'm ready for whatever we got to be ready for whatever that man leave you that woman leave you members leave you but are you ready for whatever? The work continues to go on. God can use whoever he wants, whenever whom he wants. But he decided to use Job at this particular time. And my brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that God is choosing you at this particular time. There's some things that are going on in your life you may not understand. There's some family members you may not even be getting along with and you don't understand. And you saying, why? you saying, why? And maybe God just wants you to distance yourself from them for right now. Are you hearing me? And we may not understand, praise God. But you got to be ready for disappointment. You got to be ready for upsets. You got to be ready for, for, amen, everything. Job made up his mind that he was ready. I want to fast forward the story, amen, to the second chapter, amen. The second time Job is, amen, being tested. Look to somebody and say, tests are necessary. necessary. I want you to catch this, tests are necessary because it determines whether you're going to go to the next level or not. What the enemy meant for bad, God meant it for good. And we have to understand, praise God, a lot of things that happen in our life, Deacon Mahone, is necessary. It's necessary. Because in the process, God is strengthening you for the next thing to come your way. Don't stop coming. Don't stop believing. Job began, amen, to get attacked. Amen, and sometimes we're going to be attacked on every side. And we're going to go through some hardships. We're going to go through some pain. And we don't know what's going on. I want you to go down, praise God. Even praise God. The people you think that's standing by you, even the closest will disappoint you. Can I talk Bible? Go down. 
down to about, amen, the ninth verse. Job 2 and 9 said, Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Amen. You have to understand, praise God. Satan, praise God, around about the seventh verse, Satan had done done something. Let's go back to the seventh. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job. Somebody say, struck Job. Say, he struck Job. In other words, amen, he did some damage to Job, amen, flesh. I want you to catch it because we realize that Satan can touch Amen. The inner man. So many times we are struck on the outside. We love going on Facebook and TikTok and, 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 and whatever they got. And then if you don't get no like, you mad. Don't put it out there and you ain't got to worry about it. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm working for the Lord. So it doesn't matter if you don't like what I like as long as God loves what I'm doing. You have to understand, praise God, Job was scrooked. Amen. In the worst way, with a painful ball from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. And he stood up himself a pot, a pot shared with which, amen, Job was in a terrible state. Amen. Sometime, praise God, it looks like it over. But amen, I heard somebody say time and time again, if believer was get this in their head, we'll be all right. If I die or if I perish, let me perish because I'm going home to be with the Lord. See, a lot of Christians don't really believe that. We're saying it, but do we really believe that? I believe I'm heaven bound, Sister Blinks, and I can't turn around. We got the makeup in our mind, praise God. If the angel of death come knocking at the door, are you ready? People, it's time to get ready. I told you last week, 2020, 2020, it's just another year. And we don't know what's going to happen. We got to get ourselves together. Now. Look at somebody and say now. now. I love people. I ain't going to let Mother Chapman, my birth mother, I ain't going to let my high school sweetheart, Sister Chapman, my daughter Chantel, and Anthony II, Sister Yolanda, my brother, I don't care how much you love me, but you ain't standing in my way. Because the Bible says, let nothing separate you from the love of God. Some people are going to miss heaven because of somebody else. Job, listen to this. Job, love of his life. Brother Smith, his wife, say his wife. His wife. Sometime. Hey Amen. I don't want women to leave because sometimes we men, we, we, we just as hard headed as some of these women. <laughs> but he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women said. Shall we indeed accept the good from God? We always accept the good from God. We don't mind the blessings. We don't mind the Cadillacs, the big houses, the fine clothes, oxtail, macaroni, cheese, green bean, cornbread. We don't mind all that good living. But what about when you can't get that oxtail, collard green? You know how we eat people. The fine suits and the fine dresses. Are you going to still be ready? Job told his wife, you talking as a foolish person. A foolish 
woman. We accept the good, but we don't want to accept the bad. A lot of people can't handle the bad. One of the mothers in the church used to tell me, hey man, about three, four years ago, Pastor Chapman, you in your feelings. I didn't even know her vocabulary was like that. And you know what? She was right. She was right. See, a lot of time, we don't want constructive criticism. This mother told me, pulled me to the side, told me, say, you're not in position. The first thing in my mind, who she thinks she is? But I had to back up. Because the Bible said, honor thy mother and thy father that you may live long upon this earth. Look to somebody and say, she don't have to be your birth mother. She's a spiritual mother. She told me, say, you the pastor, you the leader, and you need to lead the church, and you need to be in Sunday school. I said to myself, no, she didn't. But she was telling me right. She was telling me right. We have to lead by example because people are watching and Satan wants an opportunity to discredit not only me but the ministry and not only the ministry but God God you've been so good to him you done gave him a salary you done gave him a big old church you done gave him a loving congregation and look at him he don't even appreciate it he thinks because he's the senior pastor, he can walk in and do what he want to do and say what he want to say. But look to somebody and say, the devil is a liar. I got to line up just like everybody else got to line up. So if the pastor tell you something, don't get in your feeling because I want you to check me as I check you. Come on, somebody. It ain't about the title. Come on, somebody. Deacon Matthew, sometimes my wife tells me some things that I don't like it. Pick your clothes up. Don't do this. Don't do that. You're eating too much. Lord, have mercy. Well, stop cooking. No. My brothers and sisters, we must be ready at all times. We must prepare our children. We must prepare our babies, our young men. We got to prepare them for that world. Because what they're going through at home ain't nothing. Amen. Outside them doors, everything is coming at them. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Sometimes you tell your children to watch out for this, that, and the other. But it's more than this, that, and the other. It's some stuff parents don't even know what's going on. They tell them don't smoke cigarettes, now they're vaping. Well, you say don't smoke cigarettes. My daddy told me, say, don't me let you catch, catch you drinking so I don't drink, I sip. You see what I'm saying? Kids are smarter than you think they are. Let me say it again. Kids are smarter than what, so what you do, you cover the whole ground. If you want our children to be ready and get ready and stay ready, you got to let them know they got to be aware of everything. Look to somebody and say everything. My brothers and sisters, we got to stay ready. All the time. Thank you, sister. All the time. I am free. I am free. I'm free. I believe I'm saying that again, since you know. I am free. I am free. Hallelujah. Somebody help me out. Come on and help me out. How many free this morning? Come on and stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Sing 
you, my sister. No longer blind. Ain't nobody stop me now. No more chain holding me. I done broke it all, sister man. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Come on, my brothers. Come on and sing it like you mean it, sister. I am free, praise the Lord. No longer bound, no more chains. The doors of the church is open back now. Worship. Hallelujah. Nobody can stop me now. I'm free. I'm like Job. I done been through a whole lot of things. Come on, somebody, one more time, sister. I want to feel it. Come on. I am free. Are you free today? Ask yourself, are you free? Oh, yes, Lord. God is so good. Hallelujah. My soul, it's just another blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Amen. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Lelisha. Amen. I'm moved by the Spirit. I, amen. I'm always calling on her. Amen. But I'm telling you, y'all better get ready over there. Why get ready? Because I may be calling on one of you. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Are you free? I'm free. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, when you know that you know you're free, look at somebody and say, because I'm born again. Say, I am free because I am born again. It ain't about what I think. It ain't about what I feel. It ain't about what somebody say about me. I know I have accepted Jesus as Lord and my Savior. And I believe he died and risen for me. Amen. I want y'all to take this with you, amen. You can write it down, you can remember it. And I believe it's Isaiah 49 and 16. Amen. 49 and 16. Amen. Know that you know that you're free. Amen. God have, Jesus have engraved, amen, your name in his palm. Remember when they nailed him to the cross? Yeah. That was for me. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter what somebody else believe. Amen. I know for myself. Come on, somebody. Don't let nobody dictate to you or tell you what you're not. Know who you are. And whatever come your way, amen, get yourself ready. And get ready now. I said it last week, and I'm going to say it again. We got almost 11 and a half more months to come to go, to go through. Amen? And we don't know what's going to come. 
Amen. amen. Brother Morgan Scurry, amen, going to do us the honor on the fourth Sunday. Amen. So I want everybody to be in the house to support him. Oh, amen. And I say to you, get yourself ready. Because it might be you next. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm happy today. Amen. I'm happy because Jesus lived. Yesterday, amen, I was, I was on funeral duties, amen, and it came out of nowhere, but I learned something. I told them, I said, you show me the way, amen, and I'll do exactly what you say, amen. Amen. I thank God, amen, from being in the inside looking out from the outside looking in is totally different. Amen. Hearses used to bother me, but yesterday I drove one for the first time. We got to get ourselves ready, amen, for the work of God. Because time is at hand. Time is winding down. Look to somebody and say, love me. Love me. Now. now. I want to see your lips moving and watching. Say, love me. Love me. Now. now. Love me Amen. Love me now. Sister Brown and, 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 and Brother Brown, that was easy to say, wasn't it? <laughs> now I want y'all to say it to somebody else. Go to somebody. That was easy. Brother Brown, Sister Brown, go to somebody and say it right now. I'm watching you. A matter of fact, I want everybody to play something. Everybody get out of their seat right now and go to somebody and tell them, I love you now. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Don't be choosing, people. Now. I love you now. I love you now. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Get your heart and mind ready. Hey, I love you now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want y'all to hear me real quick, quickly. Amen. We're getting ready to go into our Holy Communion. Real, real quickly. Listen, if you do that as often as you should, you will have less problems in your church, in your home, and even on your job. When someone go to talking, amen, like Joe, foolish wife, look him in the eye and say, I love you. They can't even get mad. You mess them up. When the enemy get mad at you, Sister Mitchell, Barbara Mitchell, all y'all three looking like sister, I know your cousin, look to somebody and say, I love, I love you. When your brother and sister want to get ugly with you, look at them and say, I love them. I love you. Say, man, I love you. It ain't going to have nothing else to say. I guarantee you. Amen. Thank you, Urshas. Amen. The brown looking at each other talking about love. You better tell somebody else. Amen. That's easy. And you know what? Ain't nobody come up here and tell me. Not even Sister Chapman. I was watching. I was watching them. Miss Long.
the sacrifice that he made for us. The suffering that he went through for us. Being sped upon. you to remember and I was saying with a sister Yolanda as we remember that should draw us closer to God each time we partake of his body and drink of his blood that should draw us closer to him as we remember what he did for us. He was sinless. But he died for sinful people like me and you. But according to the scriptures, we all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. But he made a way for us. And he wants us to remember this. Uh, 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 just remember what we are doing. Sometimes I heard it said that it becomes commonplace because we do it so often. Yeah. No, it should not. It should draw us closer to God. Each time we drink of his blood and yeah. eat of his yeah. body, we need to remember. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Father and Lord, come in your name of Jesus, Father. Father, come and see you, Heavenly Father, through what you told us to do. Come to the table of, of, of mercy, Heavenly Father, each and every time to remember how Jesus died and suffered for us. It should have been us on the cross, Heavenly Father, and, and he did it for us so that we wouldn't have to. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you, and he made a way back to you. And we just can't say hallelujah, can't praise him enough. And to remember how Jesus suffered and gave his life just for the love of us. And sometimes we don't feel like we should be loved like that, but he did it just because it was his commission to come down and do it. And he did it to please his father. And we just can't say hallelujah, we can't praise him enough, we can't worship him enough. He's so worthy. He's the lamb of God, which was slain for us. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we come to your obedience to what you say. That as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of you. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made on our behalf. Lord, in yourself, come to us. Walk in.
the third time he went and prayed to the Father. Father, let this cup pass from me. Is there any way this could be a conflict by me not drinking it? God is wicked and rest ruling about forevermore and let the church say